Good afternoon, everybody. Um, you know, every now and again in the industry, you come across um, a development that's just so simple and so unique that you, you just stand back and you wonder, well, why hasn't this been done before? And that's really what the old pilot is about. It's a very simple, unique development that's just so simple in concept. So why haven't we been doing this like this before if it's really that good? So let me tell you about it. And let me just take you back a little bit and give you an overview of infrastructure and ports, just to put it all in perspective. If we go back to 1925, the infrastructure around the vessel is nothing. The only infrastructure is on the vessel itself. It's the derricks that are used to unload the cargo. Now, fast forward all the way to 1956 when Malcolm McLean took an old oil tanker, decided he could put boxes on it, and on the ID of X, created the world's first container ship that sailed from Port of Newark to the Port of Houston. What a change that was. And then if you fast forward a little bit further to around 1990, port infrastructure in the container industry was really well developed. The cranes were much bigger, the handling facilities were much bigger. And then if you zoom up to 2006, the mega carriers arrived. The infrastructure was now really growing fast. Cranes were much bigger. And then in 2008 came the Amagursk, the 15,000 TU, largest container ship currently on the water. So big that 11 cranes service it at once. And this is really interesting. It is a length of 397 meters, a width of 63 meters, a cruising speed of 31 knots. That's very innovative, 31 knots. It means the vessel can go from China to West Coast US four days faster than a conventional container ship. Fantastic for perishable goods. What's interesting too is that in 1970 the prediction was 3,250 TU, 65,000 ton dead weight, a width of 32 meters, a depth of 12 meters, which was the capacity of the what? Capacity of the Panama Canal. Beyond Panama, you went into the post-Panamax class vessels, 10,000 TUs, and beyond Panamax, you have the Suez class, come up, 12,000 TUs, range of 15 meters, and beyond Suez Max, you have Malacca class, Max, 18,000 TUs, 200,000 ton dead weight, width of 60 meters, and a dredge depth of 16 meters. Now what's interesting about the Amagurus is that it's too big for any of these channels. It's strictly trans-Pacific. Just east coast, west coast US to China. That's the only run it can make. But this talk isn't about the ships. It's about what the ports have to do to deal with them. It's about what the engineer has to take into account to design a berth for them. And it's about what the contractor has to do to install those berths, given that we're dealing with much larger ships than ever before. We're dealing with deeper water. Dredge depths 20 years ago was nine meters. Now it's 20 meters. We're dealing with fender systems that used to be timber and rubber. Now they're superposed Panamax systems. You're dealing with mooring systems where you have a bollard on the deck, on the dock, 60 tons every 35 meters. Now it's 165 tons every 12 meters. The capacities have gone up so much. You're dealing with loads on the, on the deck itself that are two and a half times what they were 20 years ago. You're dealing with seismic design, didn't design for seismic activity 30 years ago. Cargo handling, the cranes have got much bigger because the ships have got wider and the reach is so much more. And you're dealing with pile loading systems. Used to be 25 ton timber piles. Now they're 250 ton steel or concrete piles. What a factor of difference that is. And you're also looking at the deck, the dock itself. 
And that has had to change. That has had to evolve to meet the demands of bigger and bigger ships, higher, higher loading, and deeper and deeper dredging. The easiest way to do a dredge was to use a simple sheet pile wall extended in front of the existing dock. It allowed you to excavate a few feet more. Well, that isn't enough. Then higher capacity systems, such as flat web cellular construction, very unique, very complex. It's complex construction, but carries an awful lot of load. Or beyond that, the much more common king pile, which is a beam with a sheet pile in between, very high capacity for birthing structures. And equal to this, and probably a little bit more flexible, is the use of king piles, but also the use of the pipe sheet pile combination. Very high capacity, used in ports all over the world. Port of Caicedo in the Dominican Republic is a pipe Z wall. Here it is here, that's the configuration of the new berth alongside this one. And in uh, Fortaleza in Brazil, this pipe sheet pile wall for a new LNG facility extends 100 meters at the moment, it goes on to 1,000 meters, creating a completely new berth for that facility. But as designers look for more and more efficiency, these systems just aren't quite enough. Not only do they want a more efficient, more cost-effective system, they want it to carry more load than ever before. And it's for that reason that the old pile system came into fruition. And it's a very simple concept. It's connecting pipe to pipe. In the previous slide, you saw pipe to sheet pile. You saw beam to sheet pile. But now you bring the pipe to the pipe. And you make it capable because of these innovative connectors that didn't exist before. And pipe to pipe is not exactly brand new. Pipe to pipe systems have been constructed all over the world. But they're done with a very convoluted, half-baked connection system that was always problematic. And when you have something that's a problem, it's just not used. It was prone to declutching when you broke the piles into hard soils. And these connectors now make it feasible for the first time ever. And they create a completely new dynamic in capacity. So the pipe comes with this connector already assembled onto it. And the contractor just connects them and he constructs in a very simple, like forming a jigsaw, this long high capacity wall. These connectors have been tested to 350 tons, and they're not manufactured by hot rolling as you would normally do steel. They're extruded, and the extrusion process builds in very high ductility and very high strength. And high ductility is very useful because it means the steel can bend and take rotational force, but it won't fracture. Try doing that with hot roll steel. It'll fracture and break. So you get high capacity port structures, very useful to carry the loads of the structure directly on these pipe piles. Highway construction, bridge abutment construction, all high capacity. The largest project in North America is the Toronto Diamond Rail Grade Separation for Canadian National and Canadian Pacific, separating the two railway systems as they came together. And you have pipe connected to pipe for 1.7 miles, 2,400 pipe piles were driven up to 25 meters in length. Extremely high capacity. The Haddon Memorial Bridge in Maryland is currently ongoing. It uses pipe to pipe to form a cofferdam to enable excavation on the bridge to rebuild the foundations for a 1 in 500 storm. These piles are 43 meters long. The water is 30 meters deep. It's really high capacity. So these kind of simplistic combinations create very, very high capacity solutions. And they're very efficient means they're very competitive, more than they've ever been before. Here's why it works. This is a plot of strength and weight. And for a typical cane pile system, it's a, a linear relationship, meaning that if I increase 